No, we got 40 minutes left. I, I do have to leave just a little bit early. I've got a, a quick little meeting with a couple of faculty today before lunch. But anyway, thanks for asking the question. I, I think it's a, it's a great question. You know, why why can't our computers uh, do as well as our brains do? Um, and we're just we're just not there yet te technologically. Okay, so uh, we've already covered Mark Broston's uh, 2013. Uh, practicum. He he shared some of that technology with um, Shelley not too long ago. She has since improved upon it, and we've had the nice opportunity to work over uh, across campus in the chemistry department. We're now looking to partner with the environmental studies program to keep our own little in-house e-waste processing going. So ho hopefully that continues. I've got a uh, unfortunately, in environmental studies, their fume hood does not have sufficient uh, suction to keep, you know, keep whatever exhaust from coming back into the room. So we've got to got to work that out. But um, Shelley, since you're here, do you know anything uh, the latest on Opportunity Resource here in town? How they're doing, or? No, I just heard like rumors, gossip, that they're going to have a conference in the fall. Well, better than any, better than nothing. Nothing wrong with making money necessarily. And um, that I mean, they have to be um, selling the rest of I mean, the, the components and everything off. Um, so, you, so you think opportunity is making is making money? Okay, that's not necessarily really, a bad thing. They've gone to I mean, really hard at all over the place to get you away. Okay, so they've had an aggressive campaign to, to bring it in. Yeah. And the university has said no to Yeah, that, that's what I'm a little curious about. Um, why? So why would the university not just process the waste? Are they are they doing much processing on site, or do you yeah. do you know? They take stuff apart. Okay. The okay. The 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 my what I was told the reason why the UM is not giving it to them is because they are increasing the carbon footprint by what they're doing. Okay. All right. So that's that's a interesting way of looking at it. I don't know why I'm having such bad connections today. Because they can have the person from California come, one shot, boom, and take it all back to the same spot. What Opportunity is doing is parting it out, having to ship it out, sell it out, increasing a bigger carbon footprint okay. than just having Okay, so let me. I'll just, I'll just draw up what I what it sounds like. Um, I heard you say with regard to because those those two topics are related. So opportunity resource uh, versus the University of Montana strategy. So right now, it sounds to me, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds. Um, so I'll, I'll just put um, opportunity here. put uh, UM here. I'll put uh, California over here. And do you, do you know where Opportunity is sending its stuff? Well, any of it has to be out of Montana. Yeah. So is it going overseas? California. There's other places that take different components, but I don't think they're actually really dismantling to the component itself. Yeah. I think they're just selling off the boards. Okay. Which well, like three different places. Yeah. So I, I think, so right now, um, the University of Montana is just, uh, I'm just going to say, you know, internal. And here, this is more, is opportunity taking it from anywhere? Like, is it, are people driving down from our Lee to drop it off? Yeah, or? They're picking it up to their, people are dropping it off. Oh, really? So they have a pickup service? Okay. So it sounds like an opportunity. They're, they're, they're bringing in a lot more um, materials from, from across the state. At the university, it's just all internal. And a second ago, we saw the, um, the piles. What is that? Yeah. So th this, was, this is 2013. And I think 
these computers were on their way to California, but um, we, we processed them here and harvested a bunch of gold in-house, internally. So it, it sounds to me like um, what Eddie is concerned with is that there's a much bigger carbon footprint running the stuff to all different places rather than kind of a one-shot pipeline between here and California. Is that where you're, where you're going with it? Yeah. Well, when it gets to California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, another Yeah, that, that's a great question. And I don't, I don't know. It very well could be. And what I, and, and from my understanding, um, what, I, and I think, I think California would typically charge, and, and here's the whole, the, the money flow question. Here's, here's, here's the, you know, what, we're, what we're looking for. And it gets right back to that same aluminum recycling question that we had earlier on. Um, you know, what's, what's the value of the, you know, the gold, silver, et cetera, Heading, heading to California versus the, um, the cost of doing all this driving back and forth, right? So it's, it's obviously costing California something to come here and back, and they better make sure that there's enough gold, silver, precious metals, et cetera, to make their own economic return on investment worthwhile. When I talked to Eddie, he said that um, we have a, enough materials flowing in that direction that they don't charge anything for pickup, where normally they would charge something like 35 cents a pound or whatever. So it, it sounds like we've sort of reached the break-even point with this company, and no money is exchanged at all. So. Now, what, what, they, what you could do is remove the boards from all of the electronics, mm -hmm. and then here locally scrap all of the aluminum cast and all of that, and actually can sell the board. So you're thinking if, so, so what you're saying is if, if we were to if we were to take out so what you're what you're saying here if we took the um, the, the boards out um, now the the mass burden and the volumetric burden of transporting it is reduced and then the money and you're thinking the, the money would would flow back to the university. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Or so. they can just give it to me and I'll take care of it. So I, I, I would love that. I mean, I, I, what I would love to do, you know, honestly, would be to have you put a competing bid in for whatever is going on in California. Yeah, because if it's really about the CO2, well, let's figure out well, how much CO2 for a truck, yep. a semi, to come and back yep. versus what my CO2 would be. Sure. I like that. Well, I, I really look forward to working with that onion, and, and it's not a hard problem to do. So, and I, I think if this institution is serious about its carbon footprint, they would, they would put this right on their CO2 bottom line, and we could help them solve it. So, cool. All right, thanks so much. Got to move forward. Okay. Oh, this was our plastic densifier, also from the and and, and again, it's the same. It's the same problem. Uh, and I, I mentioned earlier. I'll say it again. You might expect to see a a problem like this on the final, where I'll ask you to calculate the embodied energy in that plastic. I'll also ask you to calculate how much energy it takes to shred the plastic, and then I'll ask you how much um, money you could make if you were to take the plastic and sell it as an alternative to coal for uh, thermal energy conversion. So as, as we saw a couple weeks ago in plastics, I mean, you're basically just looking at carbon and hydrogen. There aren't the heavy metals. There's no sulfurs. Uh, PVC, as we know, does have some uh, chlorine in that. You do not want to be breathing chlorine gas, obviously, but with the appropriate scrubbers in place on your thermal conversion unit, uh, you can get, you know, so don't burn PVC, but every, all these other plastics you've been looking at, it's carbon and hydrogen. So, so you might sit down and say, well, what, what's, are you, are you going to be able to make money running the system or not? Because you got to pay the guy to load the hopper, you got to 
pay Northwest Energy to, to spin the motors, and uh, what's what's your what's your payback look like? So, we we'll sit down and do some economics on this too. Very similar to the aluminum problem we already did. Okay, uh, so back to the notes. Let's just see what else is down here in, in the in the Broston report. So there's you know there's a little bit of that's a lot of cell phones. Um, there's a little bit of cradle to cradle going on here. You know, designed to last uh, versus designed to be pitched. Okay. Yeah, and you can you can think of this. Yeah, you can you can think of this practice as being um, urban mining. Is another way to think about it. You know, rather than vir, you know virgin mining from nature. So these guys did their did their homework. You know, went out and got the market uh, market values. What's gold right now? So these guys, you know, they, they did the research, looked to see what, um, you know, if they were going to be economically viable or not. So they're pulling out 10. And I, I like that a lot. One of the reasons we have very few deliverables is that we were able to recycle almost every part of the computer. I'm sure they just took the plastics to, you know, put them in the plastic stream at, at um, Pacific. Pacific takes plastic, or recycle only money for it. Yeah, they'll take it. They'll take it, but not get money. Correct. They will take it, but they will not pay you for it. It's a it's a break even for them. Um, well, I don't I don't I don't know if it's a break even or not, but you know, to stay in business, they need to make money on. At least one in. 1075 for gold, so it's dropped. Yeah, it's dropped a lot. So they're pulling out. Uh, they're, they're pulling out aluminum. They also did a really nice job here looking at em embodied carbon. So they just went out there and, and looked at how much. CO2 is typically generated in the manufacturing process. And so by diverting this from a waste stream, they're uh, more or less, you know, I don't say, necessarily say preventing, but um, reducing the demand on harvesting these from nature. Zinc, silicon, silver, tin. Um, nice job. They went out and, and looked at um, physical, philosophical transactions of the Royal Society. I, I like this paper a lot. I think this would be a great paper. I showed you last time a little bit how you, how to format papers, and these guys I think did a really nice nice job. They did forget to um, cite their figure too, and it looks like they might have they did not put this. Oh, here it is. No, oh, yep, they've got it in there as a as a, a field code. That's kind of nice. Looking chips. So here's the the thermal chemistry I mentioned uh, previously. That's hydrogen chloride in a coffee pot. Yeah, Pyrex can withstand the heat. Nitric acid. So this is a good, great little recipe. Sulfuric acid. And 
Anyway, I will throw this up on the um, on this week's forum. Because what I found that that cost actually a lot more to do it that way. It was a lot simpler and less chemical. Oh, okay. To, to do that, uh, some of the well, without the heat, you know, would take a little bit longer, but it still all works effectively. He did the same result. Mm -hmm. but yeah. And it was, um, you don't need ice, you don't need, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of those other things. So anyway, what, just for the, for the folks online, what, what Shelly is saying is since, since seeing this protocol, she's come up with a more energy efficient, uh, less energy intensive process for doing it. So that, that's, that's great. And that's typically where, I mean, that, that's how industry moves forward, I mean, and, and uh, in terms of being more efficient. Okay, I've got one more thing to share, and then I've got to go to a quick little meeting here for my spring semester. The, the last thing I want to show you, and again, this is just this is an idea going, going forward, where we take the solar forge, which I already showed you, and take a waste stream. I already mentioned early on in the, in the class here that um, electronics waste recovery is, can be more challenging than, than other typical types of recycling is you have a lot of different materials melted, bonded together. But this is just a, a very, oh gosh, I don't know, uh, brief, you know, kind of mile high view of a process that I, I think might be kind of uh, fun to pursue. So I've got gravity in here, I've got thermal in here, I've got atoms, and I've got spectroscopy. And I, I sent this off to my patent attorney just last night, not that it, not that it matters anymore. The, the patent laws in the United States are now are such that it doesn't matter who invents it first, it's who files it first. So I'm already, by publishing this on YouTube, I'm already shooting myself in the foot, but too bad. What I would love to see, um, and so you can think of you can think of this as basically your solid, your solid waste stream. If we get back into the, uh, the the Broston paper. I mean, just um, you know, it's that that big black wad of cell phones is this big black arrow, you know, moving in a truck or in your pocket or however. Uh, horizontally, right here, sitting between the, so the sun's heat and this flow of, of matter, is this gadget. So you're not burning anything. You're just you just got a, a really hot source. When when Shelley and I did this back in the bullpen, we were we were spending money on you know and, and carbon on propane, but you can get stuff. And all you're after is heat. And so put this um, solar forge, point it inside a vacuum so you don't have the oxygen to, to deal with. So solar forge inside a vacuum sitting right here. It gets hot. It wants to melt. And so now you've got this sort of flow of matter. And again, the details are yet to be worked out. But now you've got gravity sort of wor working in your favor. And this, this column, if you will, is again going to be a lot like a um, uh, an oil refinery. So if you remember back to NRGY 101, you've got a big old ball of, of crude oil. You start cooking it. The, the lighter hydrocarbons, you know, the methanes, the ethanes, the propanes, butanes go to the very top. The octanes come out, kind of come off in the middle. The tars are at the bottom. So what I would love to do is um, just take it all and more or less you've got a full uh, atomic separator where every single element flowing with gravity in the stream comes off into its own little bin. So hydrogen's coming off, you'd, you'd have obviously have other compounds coming off as well and if they had value, some, somebody asked me the other day like why is, you know, why is propane so expensive? Well, you know, it's supply and demand, uh, but if you go after everything, you know, 
zero landfill. I, I'm dying to share this with my, my buddy um, Nathan Hansen. He's actually working on patents to go and, and mine landfills. I would like to take his landfill mining robot, send it to my vacuum solar forge furnace, and just take it all. Uh, you know, turn and 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 the other big take home here is that any pure substance is going to be more valuable than a mixed substance. And, and if you, and the, that's really the big point of recycling is is taking these mixed substances, you know, your dirty soda can or your sandwich wrapper or what have you, turning it back into a pure substance, and now it's got more value. So here's here's sort of your 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 dollars kind of flowing out of of this side. Okay. That's all I got. I've got a meeting. I hope uh, everybody enjoyed the e-waste week. I'll post these videos and throw a couple quiz questions up for the end of the day. Um, and I promise by the end of uh, Thanksgiving break at least to have everything graded. If you if you see some error in the grading again, let me know. Uh, again, I don't. I'm the only person. Well, I don't have someone else double checking my, my problems for me and. Uh, Yeah, there's my invention. Okay, thanks a lot, and we'll see you all Tuesday. I'll, I'll be here for the last lecture before Thanksgiving break, and then we just got a couple weeks, and that's it. So thanks. <laughs>